It's the return everyone has been waiting for. He has over 37 years of roller derby experience, but his erratic actions have landed him out of the WSL. Tonight on Roller Jam, little Richard Brown comes out of retirement. Brown will be debuting his highly anticipated Illinois Riot. He will be challenged by Sundog captain, Bill Barker, and Denise Lote, the undisputed goddess of the bank track, treats the bank track like a fashion show. The Florida Sun Dogs collide with the Illinois Riot next on Roller Jam. Skating League from the beautiful MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Hello, everybody. I'm Rory Marcus along with Lee Hawk Rearman. And tonight, a premier matchup in the World Skating League as the Florida Sun Dogs go against the Illinois Riot. You know all about the Sun Dogs. We all do. But the Illinois Riot, they're a little bit of a mystery right now. We do know, though, that little Richard Brown is in charge of this team. Well, right now, we're calling these guys the Quiet Riot. There's a good reason. There's a big question mark in terms of we're not even sure who's playing for these guys. Little Richard Brown has amassed what he says are these old timers getting back to just good clean skating but they won't let us into their practices they sure as heck won't provide the media with anything other than, than than just like the name of the team it's a big question mark but i got to think little richard brown always has something up his sleeve he certainly does as a matter of fact he met with kenneth logue the third and brokered this deal well i'm not sure about this logue fella he sure is stirring things up here in the world skating league rory General Manager Kenneth Logue has turned this league around. He's turned it upside down, as a matter of fact. We do know the Riot is a veteran team, but then so are the Sun Dogs. Denise Loden will lead her team here tonight, <laughs> no matter what she might happen to be wearing. Well, last time out, Denise Loden, claiming that her jersey was torn up by the enforcers, came out in this little kind of cream-colored sequiny yeah. kind of thing, which I kind of personally took a lot of to, and I know you did. But Kenneth Logue, the general manager of the World Skating League, has said, Denise Loden, do not wear it or there will be repercussions. And we all don't know Denise Loden has a little spunk under her, so we'll see how she reacts to that. And here we go, the Illinois Riot coming on the track. This is our first look at them. I know it's your first look. And we're just as curious as you are. You really need a program to tell who the players are. There goes Patsy Delgado, one of the uh, women skaters the Riot have signed up. She wears the old-style quad skate, Talk. Well, these guys are a blast from the past, I guess. Little Richard Brown has amassed a whole group of not necessarily no-names, but right now, Rory, as we said, there are a bunch of question marks. You wonder where little Richard Brown got some of the skaters, how he signed them up, what kind of practices they've had. But I have a feeling when you're talking about little Richard Brown, he doesn't care too much about practice. He knows that he's the leader of the team. He's out there and he wants to win. And now here come the Sun Dogs. The Sun Dog women taking to the track first. And you saw Denise Lowden. There she is. Still has the Jimmy outfit on. And now she's been joined by a teammate, Suzanne Shaleen. Well, I'd always say that the best medicine is the one that really gets you rolling. Well, people in the World Skating League are rolling right now with the new fashion statements as Bill Barker, Captain America, looks on. I wonder if he likes his teammates outfits, Rory. I'm sure he likes his teammates just fine. Hawk, Bill Barker, Captain America, and the Florida Sun Dogs getting set to go against the Illinois Riot, and there's Suzanne Shaleen. Here are the rules of Roller Jam. There are four six-minute periods. The women skate periods one and three. The men skate periods two and four. There are five skaters per team, two jammers, and three blockers. The blockers wear white helmets. The jammers have the black helmet with the stripe. Points are scored when jammers lap opposing team members. Here's an example of what I was just talking about. The jammer for the green team breaks out from the pack and circles the track. For each member of the red team that he or she passes, one point is earned. Well, the rules are pretty simple, but these key matchups for today's game are anything but, Rory. Of course, we all know about Denise Loden. She's one of the premier skaters in all the World Skating League, not just as a woman. She can jam, she can block. But for these Illinois Riot, again, a big question mark. We don't know anything about it. Perhaps I had my a little fly on the wall over in the women's locker room. Look for Patsy Delgado, maybe to step things up for her Illinois Riot teammates. And here we go, the Illinois Riot and the Florida Sun Dogs. And we'll find out quickly about this Illinois Riot, what type of team they have. 
and who Richard Brown has put together on this Illinois Riot team. I think they're going to be veterans. I think they're going to be tough. And they'll know one thing, and that's how to skate and how to play this game. Well, I can't stop looking at the new fashion statement here that the, that the Florida Sun Dog women are making. But, Rory, I got to I gotta think, what is Kenneth Loach going to do about this? That's hard to say. He's impossible to read sometimes. Talking about the new general manager of the World Skating League, Kenneth Lowe. And look at Patsy Delgado. Wow, she knows how to play this game, doesn't she? She gets back there to block. And let's see if the Sun Dogs can get any points. It doesn't look like it right now, the way Delgado's handling the back of that pack. Patsy Delgado, one of the veterans that Richard Brown has put on this team. You might notice she's wearing the old-fashioned quad skates. And it doesn't matter to her what kind of an outfit it is. If it's the Sun Dogs, she's ready to go. Well, we're going to have a lot more information for you, ladies and gentlemen, about these Illinois riot. They've been called the Quiet Riot. But Patsy Del 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 Delgado from the old school is somebody. She is the female version of little Richard Brown, and she is going to make a press. You say she did. Make I a think statement. Denise Loden wearing that little gold outfit in. I guess you notice Suzanne Shaleen has one on, too. That's a statement of solidarity on the Sundog team. No, Rory, I didn't notice. I was uh, not influenced by the outfits of these young ladies because I truly look at them as professionals. That's something I've always admired about you, Lee. And I got, a, I got some land in Florida I can sell to you, by the way. Uh-huh. And out on the jam now for the Sun Dogs. That's little Kara Friedman, but she didn't last long, did she? As she is taken down by Crystal Schneider of the Riot. And again, we apologize. We don't have a whole lot of information on these guys. But 57, Crystal Schneider takes down Kara Friedman like nobody's business. These guys, we may not know a lot about them, but they sure have been practicing. Well, we tried to get into that practice, and little Richard Brown said no, no media whatsoever. How about an interview, Richard? He said no, none of my skaters can talk to you at all. So they're out here trying to surprise the whole league. Uh, here's the surprise for Crystal Schneider coming up, I think. Yep, Denise Loden's going to give it to him. saw Denise Loden, her and Sean Atkinson were arguing about her outfit. Well, she's got the outfit on again, and she still must have the Sean Atkinson playbook because that was the, the back attack for Crystal Snyder, who we saw have a great jam One before that. Point. She got One a little lesson in penalty. modern roller jam. Illegal blocking. Take a break right here, but as you can see, what a game we have going early in the early going as the Illinois Riot take on the Florida Sun Dogs. Stay with us. Rory Marcus and Lee Hawk Rearman back in Las Vegas. The Illinois Riot and the Florida Sun Dogs are in the first period, and it's pretty even so far. A 1 1 tie. We're learning about this Illinois Riot team the same way you are, and that's by watching them skate. And little Debbie Rice gets out for the Sun Dogs, and to her left for the Illinois Riot is Millie Guthrie from Winston, Salem, North Carolina. And for those just turning in, tuning in, the Illinois Riot. We've called them the quiet ride because we don't know a whole lot about them. But other than Mark D'Amato last season, was, who was the only skater in the world skating league with quads on, these new Illinois Riot have several. We'll give you much more detail about that as we go along. They take Debbie Rice down, and now the Riot scoring points in bunches. Did she call it off? Yep, she's going to call it off. When you see the hands to the hips like that, that means the jam has been called off. Billy Guthrie got her point. What'd they give her? One? They only gave her one, and then she called it off. Well, you saw Kathy Evangelo apparently smarting from that takedown. Speaking of takedown, Denise Loden, new outfit and all, is going right after Patsy Delgado. Here we go, Roy. This isn't the first fight either. The trouble from the referees. Well, Sean, poor Sean Corbin, our referee, he's got his hands full. As he says, Patsy Delgado in the penalty box. And Patsy Delgado's, Delgado's got a lot of experience. And Denise Lowe, there's not many that can mix it up with her. If there is anybody, Patsy Delgado, new to the World Skating League, she's one of them. 
She's new to the World Skating League, but she's not new to skating. She was a Los Angeles Thunderbird. She was terrific in the uh, roller games. And now she here, here she is in roller jam, and she still has something left. Believe me, or Richard Brown wouldn't have brought her in here. And on this jam, again, that's Kara Friedman for the Florida Sun Dogs, and she's in the lead right now, trying to get points for the Sun Dogs. Well, Denise Lowden, the true champion, you saw her going at it with Delgado right before that, but she's right back at it, gives Kara Friedman a big whip, may not p play out for some points for the Sun Dogs, but hats off to Denise Lowden. And by the way, I really do like that new outfit. Faith Urban takes the legs out from underneath Friedman, and that leaves the Illinois Riot with a chance to score as Ileana Bonilla comes up to the back of the pack and gets an assist back there to score a point and call the jam off. And then down she goes. Well, and Ileana Bonilla, she's one of the young folks here the, for the Illinois Riot, and Denise Lowden wastes no time of going right back after Patsy Delgado out of the penalty box, Roy. She came out of that penalty box to take on Denise Lowden. That penalty box doesn't mean much to Patsy Delgado, apparently. And look at that look on her face. She says, oh, I know I'm in for a long night tonight. And Delgado before the game. Right, and she's making no secret now that she doesn't like that little outfit. No, she's a throwback to the old days of roller derby. And Denise Lowden says, stop worrying about my top and let's play this game. And coming up in the uh, second period, it's going to be Little Richard Brown and the Illinois Riot going against Sam Martin and the Florida Sun Dogs. Former teammates Richard Brown taught Sam Martin a lot. We'll see how it plays out in period number two. The Riot lead it three to one. Welcome back from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. There is Ray Robles, and in the infield is our Broadway Danny Wolf. Okay, you're looking at Denise Lode and a lot of controversy with her in this game, just like the last game from what she's wearing. And now I'm with Patsy Delgado of the Illinois Riot. You've been going out with Denise. You don't like what she's wearing. Can you see what she's wearing? She has nothing on. Well, she, she's wearing something. No, she has nothing on. Well, what does she have on? That thing, oh my God, I'm so embarrassing. I mean, God, I... You were a pioneer. You skated on the T-Birds in the 70s and 80s. Have you ever seen anything like this? Anyone skating? She's sick! Tell her to go put some clothes on. You're supposed to wear clothes like this. What's the matter with her? She needs to put clothes on. Good luck, Patsy. Thank you. Well, I thought Nevada was the silver state, but here in Las Vegas, Suzanne, Shaleen, and Denise Loden have turned it gold, Hawk. Well, I'd love to talk about women's fashion, but I got to talk about the key matchups for the men. Sam the Flame Martin, we know he's fast, we know he's agile, and we know he learned everything from Little Richard Brown. And Little Richard Brown, the cagey veteran, the old-timer, he's always got things up his sleeve. He knows he's forgotten more tricks than most people know. But when will time, father time, catch up to Little Richard Brown? That's Richard in the back of the pack already yelling at the crowd as they get ready to go here in the period two. The men take the track, and little Richard Brown gets in front of the pack because he wants to whip his jammer out if the jammer can even get there. As the Sun Dogs are tough in the pack as well, but let's see who emerges on this first jam of the second period. And it looks like the uh, Riot might get their jammer out after all. That's big in number 56. Mo Sanders, can he get out? Brown's motioning for him, come on. But he can't get past the uh, Sundog blockers. Now he will with an assist from Brown. And Mo Sanders is out for the Illinois Riot. And he's a very aggressive skater. You can see he's got that bent over skating style, similar to like a Eric Slopey of the California Quakes or a Sam Martin of the Florida Sun Dogs. Obviously, we may have some old timers who are so caught up in the backstory, but this guy's got some speed. And there's another speedster, Sigmund Williams, breaking out for the Sun Dogs. He broke out, but there's only three seconds left in the jam. I don't think anybody's going to score any points. Mo Sanders never caught up to the pack, and if he had, he'd have found Bill, uh, Bill Barker waiting there for him. And Barker says, hey, why don't you come on and challenge me? One moment ago, we had a look at Mo Sanders' skating style. Now we have a good look at the man. Mo Sanders adding some of that trick skating style to the bag of tricks from little Richard Brown. And there's Sigmund Williams, who is out against him. A tremendous skater. Sigmund Williams has the all-time record as far as speed skating is concerned in the World Skating League. And here we go with the next jam as the 
Illinois Riot trying to kind of find their way through in this first game, and we're kind of taking a look at him as well as little Richard Brown gets pushed up into the rail by Big Bill Barker. And out on the jam, that's Mike Tanner for the Riot. And that's Jonathan Russell for the Florida Sun Dogs. Well, a lot of questions will be answered for these unknown Illinois Riot, Rory. And right now, Mike Tanner is emerging as a possible point scorer for the Riot. And you wonder where in the heck little Richard Brown found Mike Tanner and how did he sign him to this team? Well, actually, Mike Tanner, if I'm checking my records correctly, last year played somewhat for the Sun Dogs. He was a, a, a low man on the roster, got picked up by little Richard Brown for these Illinois Riot. Good combination of both youth and experience. Little Richard Brown always seems to make something out of nothing. Mike Tanner, an example of that. And Bill Parker is taken down by Brown with a nice hip check that took him out of the play and gets the riot a couple of points. One red. One yellow. One, one each. red. They got Let's one go. each. Boy, Brown used a veteran move on Bill Parker there, didn't he? Well, you saw the expression on Bill Barker's face, and I think that represents the bigger story, Rory, of we didn't know what to expect from these Illinois Riot. Well, you have to know that the Florida Sun Dogs didn't either. How do you prepare a game plan? How do you prepare your players in terms of the, the, the week of conditioning? You got to say to them, hey, Sun Dogs, you guys are looking at it just like we are. How do they prepare? Maybe they, they're, they're a little bit caught off guard by the Illinois Riot. And here's some speed on the track now as Sigmund Williams gets out there for the Florida Sun Dogs. And Andy Wallace is out for the Riot. And I mean, he's out. He's out off the track. Sigmund Williams took him out. And now Williams will be joined by Posse Shaleen. And the Sun Dogs have their two speed merchants trying to score some points. And they're going to encounter another veteran on the quad skates. Ray Robles in the back of the pack. Here's another ex-Thunderbird. And he's not easy to get by now. He never was. Looks like he's going to get some help back there, though. Sean Marshall goes back to assist. And they get by Robles with a little dipsy doodle move. I don't think Robles will take too kindly to that, do you? Well, I don't think he'll take too kindly, but I got to take my hat off to the guy. He's moving around there with some of these young cats. He's got the quad skates on. Everybody else has the inlines. He's moving Yellow. pretty good, Rory. Five Sun Dog points. Which Let's Richard go. Brown doesn't agree with at all. Let's go, pack it up. That makes it seven to four. The Sun Dogs have the lead. And what I'd like to know about Richard Brown and Ray Robles and Patsy Delgado is how in the heck did they ever form this team? And how did Richard Brown announce his retirement, come back a couple of weeks later, completely in charge of a team in the World Skating League? Well, when it comes to Richard Brown, and decisions that are made and how people behave. When I can understand that, I think I'm in pretty big trouble. Well, Kenneth Logue, the new uh, World Skating League general manager, might have had a little something to do with bringing little Richard Brown back and putting him in charge of this Illinois team. I'm sure we'll find out more on that as time goes by. But the Jammers are out. They have 45 seconds left, and now the Sun Dogs have the numbers. As they try and take out, and they do take out Andy Wallace. He's over the rail. And that's two jams in a row that Andy Wallace has ended up on his backside, very near or, or, or off or almost off the track. These Sun Dogs, I said earlier, they didn't know what to expect. It seems like they might be learning pretty quick, Rory. Richard Brown and Ray Robles back there to try and keep the Sun Dogs off the scoreboard. Look out, Richard Brown slipped and fell. He goes down, and that leaves room for some points to be scored by Jonathan Russell of the Sun Dogs, who now enters the big flying hip check from Brown. And Ray Robles has knocked somebody down. One thing about the riot, they're going to be a physical team. They're going to be tough. Well, they're living up to the I don't know what, uh, One yellow. as Sean Corbin starts awarding points, I don't know what Kenneth Logue, the, the deal he made with little Richard Brown was, but if he was expecting good clean, you can't come over here. All-American skating. <laughs> we're seeing physical play on the track, and we're seeing a lot of mouthing going off up and over the track. Well, you saw Ray Robles right there screaming just at nobody. He's yelling at the crowd. That's no way to win fans in this league. This is a new team, the Illinois Riot. This is the last jam of the first half. And the Riot trailing this game 8-4. to They're trying to get some of that back. And they send out a jammer who's well ahead of the pack. That's number 54, Mike Tanner. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio, but Williams will catch him from behind. You can bet on that. Boy, look at Williams. He is so fast. Got those skinny legs, those little tiny ankles. They're about the size of a quarter. 
but he can fly on those skates. Well, right there, you saw the difference in just sheer athletic ability. Sigmund Williams closed that gap on Mike Tanner like he was standing still. Moved right to the back to the pack. Unfortunately, looks like he's facing little Richard Brown. What's Richard Brown going to do here? Look at him. He's going to hold that pack up near the rail and allow number 54 to get through there and score. Mike Tanner. That's a veteran move by little Richard Brown that gives Tanner points and leaves all of the Sundog skaters on their back. And look at him celebrating. Well, we just got done talking about Mike Tanner being outgunned by Sigmund Williams with the experience of little Richard Brown. Those points. And Captain America Bill Barker just put Richard Brown on his back. And right there is his uh, henchman. Turn to the benches. Robles to help out. The half is over. And the Illinois Riot tied it up. 8-8. We'll be back to Las Vegas in just a minute. Welcome back from Las Vegas. Rory Marcus along with Lee Hawk Rimmon. And we have quite a game. It's a tight one between the Florida Sun Dogs and the Illinois Riot. Now, we didn't know anything about the Riot prior to this game. They wouldn't let us into our practices, wouldn't let us see a roster. But little Richard Brown has put together a roster, Hawk. He wants to play tough. He's got veterans, and he's doing it. Well, absolutely. He's bringing a physical game here to the World Skating League, and he brought in Ray Robles to join him for the men, and then Patsy Delgado for the women, caught Denise Loden for the women of the Sun Dogs, and Captain America, Bill Barker, a little bit off guard. No kidding, but I'll tell you what, Bill Barker, Denise Loden, and the rest of the Sun Dogs, it looks like they're ready for the ride. Let's find out a little bit more about this riot team and their leader, Little Richard Brown, from our own Julie Lynch. everybody in the process. Excuse me, is anyone else wondering how Richard Brown could end up in charge of yet another team? Wreaking havoc first as a sun dog and then as a hot dice, you'd think he'd be behind bars by now. But see, that's where the new general manager, Kenneth Logue III, comes into play. My sources on Wall Street say he's no stranger to foul play. I think he's up to his old tricks again, preaching non-violence and at the same time handing the reins of a team called the Riot over to unstable Richard Brown. Suspicious? The legendary Little Richard Brown has brought decades of roller derby experience into the WSL, as well as decades of aggression. Hey, I'm going back to my old way. No more Mr. Nice Guy. His old ways exiled him from the Sundog team he created. Then as captain of the Hot Dice, this act of brutality got him banished from league play. Apparently, two strikes were not enough. Brown was reinstated only to be humiliated in a dismal Founders Cup effort. But was this retirement part of a greater plan? Brown never once showed signs of quitting. Maybe it's time for you to think about retirement. Retirement? I make a quarter million a year. What am I going to retire for? And within days of Kenneth Logue III's appointment as general manager of the WSL, Brown was invited to a series of closed door meetings. An elated new head of the Illinois riot emerged. As of today, I am going to be known as King Richard because I am going to rule this league. When asked how a perpetrator of violence such as Brown got a new team, Mr. Logue responded in this fashion. Lola, call security. Get these people out of the building. Shut the damn... Just shut the damn camera off, right? Lola! I think you have to be careful about anybody who refers to himself as the king. Why? Well, unless you're Elvis. But say what you want about little Richard Brown's mouth about his age or maybe even about his gut. This guy gets it done. He may not look pretty, Rory, but he sure can play the game. He can play it physical and right there even with a little bit of flair. He's getting it done in direct defiance of Mark D'Amato who wishes that Brown and everybody was boycotting. He's with Broadway Danny Wolf. Okay, I'm here with Mark D'Amato. It's halftime. Mark, a lot of people holding signs a little derogatory to you. You don't have a lot of fans here. Uh, don't worry about it, Wolf. Anyways, you're here to announce, very interesting, the enforcers, I guess, are still on the boycott. Yes, now are. you have two more teams that have joined I'm them. I'm here to announce that the wrestlers and the hot guys are with me. And together, I have formed the Skaters United Coalition, or SUCK. What? What did you just say? And together, we will rid this league of all the other scabs who are still skating these games. So you're talking about these two teams that are in the infield right now. Specifically these two teams. The Sun Dogs and the Riot. That's right. Now, does this all stem from, let me guess, you're on indefinite suspension still from our new general manager, right. Kenneth Logue III. This is just to get back at him, huh? Listen, what I'm here to do 
This load means nothing to me. Load. Load means nothing to me. I am here. I am the dominant figure in this league. I run this league, and I am out to get his job. I think Mark D'Amato's biggest fan is Mark D'Amato, although there is one fan in the seats who would like to see him reinstated. Well, but more importantly, if you're looking for contrast, Suzanne Chalene definitely going from beast to beauty. Mark D'Amato to Suzanne Chalene and Denise Loden. She certainly looks ready to skate, doesn't she? Denise Loden all set to go as we get ready to play the second half. Patsy Delgado will be her nemesis in the third quarter, and this is a close game. The Illinois Riot and the Florida Sun Dog tied up at eight. Stay with us. The second half coming right up. It's Roller Jam in the World Skating League. Period three coming up between the Florida Sun Dogs and the Illinois Riot. We've learned more about this Illinois Riot team in the first half of this game. For instance, their style of skating, their leadership under Richard Brown. They're a tough team. They're a veteran team. And you know they really have a lot of savvy out there, Hawk. They're not going to be uh, fooled by anything the Sun Dogs do. However, they are a veteran team. They're a little older. Well, they're a little bit older, so you have to wonder how endurance and just the ability to go late in the game or, or, or longer into a season, Rory. That's going to play out not so much today because I think these guys are excited to be out here. But look for these Illinois Riot to perhaps lose some of their thunder as the season wears on. And there's Faith Urban who just took care of Friedman out. There's Friedman getting up as Faith Urban approaches the back of the pack and she approaches that gold outfit of Denise Loden who's clapping her hands and saying, come on, Faith, let's see if you can get by me. I don't think you can. And so far, she's right. Uh-oh. Debbie Rice from the back of the pack scores as Loden takes out Urban. Debbie Rice, meantime, getting points for the Florida Sun Dogs. And Faith Urban, just absolutely no match for Denise Loden. Just purely bringing a knife to a good fight is Faith Urban when she tangles with Denise Loden. Denise Loden was laughing about it. Faith Urban looks like she's not sure where she is. She's calling off the jam even though she's standing in the infield. Well, you got, I want to point out right here, you see the outfit on Suzanne Shalina. She takes a helmet from her husband, Posse. For some reason, Posse Shalene, the finish flash, is not reacting in the same manner that Denise Loden's boyfriend, Sean Atkinson of the California Quakes, is. I'm thinking Posse seems to actually be liking the attention that his wife is getting with this newfound fashion statement. Well, she does have on a pair of black shorts that uh, Denise is not wearing. I'm staying away from actually describing the fashion statement because I've already been told by our production staff that I'm on uh, double secret probation. There's nothing secret about it, baby. <laughs> The Sun Dogs get the jammer out. They have a one-point lead in this game as Kathy Evangelo leads the pack and tries to move up in the back of the pack now and scores some points. The Riot sends a jammer out after her. That's number 57, Crystal Schneider. And I wonder where Debbie Rice is. We haven't heard much from her this game, Rory. And right now, she's on the sidelines just walking around. She may be hurt. And if Kathy Evangelo takes many more shots like that, she may be hurt. Kathy Evangelo's really nowhere to be found. She's off the track. Oh! Did you see Patsy Delgado put her head into the head of Denise Loden? Wow, what a shot Loden took. That was a header. And Delgado has been complaining about the outfit of Denise Loden. Well, she's taken it, she has taken it personal, and she has personally taken it right to Denise Loden. And Patsy Delgado may be a new force to be reckoned with here in the World Skating League. She might have learned that move back in her T-Bird days. She just took her head and head-butted Denise Loden and sent her down on her back. And Denise is saying, where'd that come from? Well, Patsy Delgado, she's from Montebello, California, and she high-fives right now with Crystal Schneider as this game is tied up at nine. Well, Debbie Rice has come back on the track. I was questioning and saw her maybe thought she may have been injured. They must be listening to me because they put her right back out there. Debbie Rice back in the game for the Florida Sun Dogs. She's back in the game, and she grabs that black jammer's helmet and says, let me go get you some points and break this tie, and there she goes. She's out for the Sun Dogs, and she's after number 53, Millie Guthrie, and she knocks Guthrie to the track. And this is what we were talking about earlier in the game. We saw Sigmund Williams of the Sun Dog men just totally blast past Mike Tanner. No match. Well, no match for uh, Debbie Rice or the Illinois Riot in terms of speed. You're seeing some of that speed right now. Let's see if she can pull off a bunch of points for her Sun Dogs, Rory. Debbie Rice is a terrific skater. Patsy Delgado is a terrific blocker. And Denise Loden is setting up. Look out. Debbie Rice is going to bring Delgado. Oh! Loden, who knocks her down and gets her revenge for the last jam. And now it's Delgado who's not sure exactly where she is. And 
Denise Logan stands there like the conqueror and high fives with Debbie Rice. Well, Debbie Rice, the benefactor of the sizzle, gets a couple of points. But you said she may not have knew what hit her, did Denise Logan on the last champ. Well, like a true stamp champion, she steps up, paves the way for her teammate to score the points. Great job, Denise Logan. Patsy Delgado, the veteran skater, wearing the quad skates and feeling a little sore right now, saying, why did I ever join this league anyway? <laughs> Richard Brown talked me into it. I'll get him later. I could have stayed home and just watched on TNN. What am I doing out here? Believe me, Delgado will be back, and she'll make her presence felt again before this period is over. But right now, the jam is on. 50 seconds left in the jam as the two skaters get out. The object, of course, is for them in the black helmets to lap or pass the skaters on the other team. That's how you score the points. Gina Lombardo is out for the Sun Dogs. Norma Marshall for the ride. Gina Lombardo gets to her inside. Can she knock her down? Yes, she can. And Gina Lombardo slips. Oh, oh, she slipped and fell on the track. And now there are only 23 seconds left in the jam as Lombardo tries to get her skating legs under her again. Well, we had talked about the humidity here in Las Vegas this week being a little bit, making the track a little bit slick. Right there you saw Gina Lombardo. A lot of the faster skaters where there is any kind of track irregularity like they are much more affected than the plotters are. Gina Lombardo got an assist from Denise Lowden to score one point. I think she only got one. That's right. One Sun Dog point. And that gives them a two-point lead now at 11 to 9. There is time for one more jam in this period if they get them together and get them going. And look at look at uh, Gina Lombardo. Look at uh, Patsy Delgado and Denise Lowden. They're going at it along the rail. And Denise Lowden's getting the better of this encounter as well. Well, Denise Lowden better watch it. She has an ongoing feud going on with Stacey Blitz. I don't think she needs two enemies here in the World Skating League of this caliber. She might have so many enemies she won't be able to count them before this league is over. I've noticed that not only does her fiance, Sean Atkinson, not care for her outfit, but the other women don't seem to like it much either. Well, I tip my hat to the Illinois Riot. They're keeping it close. And now we're into the fourth period where the men will decide it, Rory. The men getting ready to come onto the track. That includes Big Bill Barker of the Florida Sun Dogs. And for the Illinois Riot, Ray Robles. He's been tough all night, and he's going to try and pull it out for this team, the Riot. Right now, it's 11 to 9. The Florida Sun Dogs lead it. We'll be right back with more Roller Jam. The beautiful MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. And what a game we have. 11 to 9. The Sun Dogs lead it. Broadway Danny Wolf, what do you think? All right, there's only one more period left. Little Richard Brown has certainly put this ragtag team of misfits, misguarded skaters, and old grizzled veterans to the test against the Sun Dogs. And they're flying through right now. They only trail by two points. Richard Brown has this team tough and rough and crazy. And right now they're on fire. This game's going to come down to the wire. Back to you guys. I have a feeling if Richard Brown were a football player, he'd be an Oakland Raider. So are the rest of these guys with the Illinois Riot. He's put together this team, and they are tough. I don't know if they always play by the rules, but they're tough to beat. Well, I, I'm just I'm telling little Richard Brown that Danny Wolf said they were grizzled and misfits. Oh, take a look at that. That is Ray Robles, and he has just taken out Bill Barker, and look how happy he is about it. He's preening and slapping hands with Richard Brown. They think that's terrific, don't they? Bill Barker doesn't think it's so great. Look at him pat himself on the back. Oh, man. Well, Ray Robles of the men riot and Patsy Delgado of the, of the female riot, as Ray Robles again starts yelling to just about anybody who will listen to him. He took a shot in the ribs as Bill Barker went by. The crowd loved it. Ray doesn't think it's so funny, but it was. 13 to 9 is the score. The Florida Sun Dogs have the four-point lead here in the final period of this game. Let's see how much life is left in the old skates of the Illinois Riot. Jammers trying to get out from the back of the pack, grabbing a Jammers helmet for the Sun Dogs. Sam Martin along with Sigmund Williams. And will either of them get out? Yeah, Sam will get out. But he's out there with an Illinois Riot Jammer as well, and that's Bo Sanders. Little Sam trying to get the best of Big Bo. Can he do it? Sam Martin's on the inside. Mo Sanders is on the outside of him. As they come up to the back of the pack, they both go down. 
with only 20 seconds left in the jam. Richard Brown's waiting for Sam. He grabs him and, oh, throws his back into the rail and then hammers him in the neck. The referee comes in, but Richard Brown, he tried to break Sam Martin's nose. Well, a little Richard Brown, we can talk about his antics off the track with the squawking in the interviews, but he was going after Sam Martin, and you see the result. That was totally uncalled for. Little Richard Brown and his cast of misfits. They better watch it. Kenneth Long apparently let Little Richard Brown put these guys together. We've heard Kenneth Loge's story on what he wants this league to be like. But is that the good old days, Hawk? I don't know if that's what he had in mind. He may have made a deal with the devil. The devil's named Richard Brown, and it may come back to bite him. Richard Brown brought in that man, Ray Robles. And right now, the riot trail this game by three points. And Richard, whoa, my, Richard Brown went up in the air. There's only one place to go, and that's back down again. And Sigmund Williams gets out of there for the Sun Dogs. But he's going to be challenged out there by the riot. And that's Andy Wallace, who's been over the rail a couple of times in this game. He'd like to pay Williams back right here. Let's see if he can do it. Well, you got to take your hand off to Andy Wallace. We saw the second period. He went over the rail twice, and Sigmund Williams makes it the trifecta. Andy Wallace is having a tough day here, Warren. He's having a tough game, but Williams is about to have a tough time here with Ray Robles. He tried to sneak by on the inside, and Ray said, no, I've seen that move before. I'm not wearing these quad skates because I'm a rookie. Bill Barker turns around. Bill Barker oh! is going to take Ray Robles out of the play. And Barker says, I have a trick or two up my sleeve, too, Ray. Well, Bill Barker doesn't say a whole bunch. He usually shows what he's all about with his actions. Well, right there, we saw, I think it was a modified version of the Captain America and Ray Robles. I don't care how much experience, how much wisdom you got, shots like that still really hurt. 14 to 10, the Sun Dogs have the lead now as Bill Barker gave Robles a taste of his own medicine. We'll be back to Las Vegas with the Sun Dogs leading it by four. There you see the Florida Sun Dog women there looking at that scoreboard and seeing their team just barely in front by a four points. 14 to 10, and time for a couple of more jams as the men will decide this one. The Sun Dogs and the Illinois Riot, it's been close throughout. And for the Riot trying to get out is Mike Tanner, but beating him to the punch, little Sam Martin of the Florida Sun Dogs, number five. Well, and I think these Florida Sun Dogs are surprised that they're in a game, Rory. It's Illinois Riot, we said to look for a lot of blanks to be filled in. Mike Tanner, one of those who scores some points. Whoa! Sam Martin with his right leg right over the rail, and down he goes. That leaves Tanner as the only jammer right now, and he's getting a big assist from the captain, little Richard Brown, who's clearing the way. Tanner's going through and picking up a bunch of points right here. And now he calls off the jam. We'll see what they give him. Mike Tanner picked up five big points with a huge assist from Brown. Well, and Mike Tanner, the finesse of Mike Tanner causes the flame Sam Martin to go out over the upright in the rail. You see him, but right here you have to admire the agility and the, I guess, the stick to of Sam Martin. Takes a spill like that, like the Energizer Bunny gets right back in the game. He sticks to it all right. He gets back up and gets back on the track, but he looks up now and sees his Florida Sun Dogs trailing the Illinois Riot, a team we knew almost nothing about coming in, leading this game against the established Sun Dogs. 15 to 14, time for one more jam, and the Sun Dogs are going to go with speed. Sigmund Williams gets out in front of the pack. With the game on the line, Williams slips down. That opens the door for the Riot. Mo Sanders catches up, and now he slips up. And now they're together. Sanders for the Riot, Williams for the Sun Dogs. With the game on the line, both men trying to win it. Williams gets a little bit of an advantage for the Sun Dogs, and now it's Sanders will have to try and catch the fastest skater in the league. Well, and Sigmund Williams and Sam Martin, I didn't think they had any idea who Mo Sanders and Mike Tanner were before this game, but right now, Roy, they're getting a clinic, and these Illinois Ryan can play, but look at Sigmund Williams go for Florida Sun Dogs. It's been a physical game, but when it's on the line, the finesse is showing. Williams passed Brown, now he's got Robles, he calls it off, and if he got two or more, they're gonna win it. The Sun Dogs are celebrating, and they've won this game, and little Richard Brown and Ray Robles are a couple of sore losers. Well, Sidney Williams might have thought he was gonna get
it a couple of weeks to grow into a Sundog uniform. You know, in the offseason, he was brought over for the wrestlers where there's no rest for you, son. You just won the game, but right now, it is just pandemonium trackside. I'll tell you what, he earned his stripes on that last jam, though, as the Sundogs pull it out. The final score is 17 to 15. Florida wins it, and little Richard Brown is hurting. Well, he's hurting, and I don't know if it's his knee as much as his pride, but Captain America takes down Mo Sanders, who had broken out as a jammer, allowing Sigmund Williams to emerge, scored three points. They were down by one. He picks up three penguins, Rory, gives him the lead by two. They snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Let's go trackside to Broadway, Danny Wolf. Kenneth Logue the third. I gotta ask you a couple things real quick. First of all, we heard Mark D'Amato at halftime. He said the boycott is not only the enforcers, but now the hot dice and the rustlers, they're all supposed to skate next week. What are you gonna do? If the enforcers and the hot dice don't skate next week, their team charters are revoked. The franchises will be handed over to new teams based in Ohio and Pennsylvania, and that'll be it. It's final. And let's talk very quickly about sex and violence, two things you were trying to cut out of the World Skating League. But we knew the Illinois Riot had your blessing. They were supposed to be a throwback to the 50s. But hey, they were more violent than any team I've ever seen tonight. I hardly think this is a throwback or a classic roller jam team. We'll be talking about this, Richard Brown and I, in private in my office. Very quickly, Suzanne Chalene and Denise Loden, more skin than ever. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. These women are role models, and they ought to be ashamed of themselves. They will pay and past the point that it hurts, I promise you. You're too much, Loach. Okay, back to you guys, Rory and Hawk. This guy's too much. Well, and Kenneth Loeb the third doesn't like what he sees as far as the outfits. He had made a deal with Richard Brown. He thought this Illinois riot team would be a throwback to the old days. Brown is hurt, but I don't think Loeb had this in mind. Well, I don't know what a throwback was. Throwback to the Attila the Hun. And also, if Kenneth Loeb has his problems multiplied, Suzanne Shaleen shows up in an outfit uh, to join her teammate Denise Loden. And Mark D'Amato, he's still not happy there are any games going on at all. Well, we're not even sure if the 5 for her lineup is going to come to play. So far here this new season, these guys are a no-show. Well, it's less important what Kenneth Logue the third thinks or what they're wearing out there. The important thing was, what a game we had as the Florida Sundogs pull it out against the Illinois Riot. Rick Robles and Richard Brown will have to regroup now. They're scheduled again next week. We'll see what happens. Thanks for joining us, everybody, for Julie Lynch, for Lee Hawk Rearman, for Broadway Danny Wolf. I'm Rory Marcus. Good night. Guests of the WSL Roller Jam stay at the MGM Grand Casino, the city of entertainment.